So, welcome to the fifth video in this SR-71 Blackbird build series, and this should be the last video, I'm sure. Uh, I did not get this finished before the, the Christmas season, for my dad's birthday, because his, his birthday is pretty close to Christmas, and um, I just got really busy, didn't have time to, to really uh, finish this up. And then I also kind of got sidetracked. I started playing uh, Tenchu Kunai for the PlayStation 2. This game here. And um, the, the thing to know about ninjas is that they aren't dangerous. They're more afraid of you than you are of them. So what I'm doing right now, just using some flat black enamel and some Zippo lighter fluid, making a wash here. Just getting on the inside here of this, uh, uh, the, the landing gear wells. So, just kind of dirtying this up a bit. And then uh, wipe off some of the excess later with a Q-tip. So, let's hopefully bring out some, some nice dirty detail in here. I made way too much of this wash. I really was not necessary. I don't know what I was doing, but whatever. Just kind of got, got kind of carried away. So, there we go. So I'm just going to let this sit for a bit and uh, get back to it later and wipe off excess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is squirt some Zippo into the little paint tray and then you just use a cotton swab just kind of go over the, the excess here pick out the highlights that's pretty cool looking huh oh gosh it absorbed it all <laughs> just put some more in here There. So, of course, it's staying in the recesses. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, hold this up here so you can see it better. Now, I also kind of went over um, these little panel lines here. I might uh, kind of clean this up a little bit here. Just a little bit. But other than that, it looks pretty nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get the idea. So, my next step was to do a uh, flat top coat and when it had the gloss top coat it really looked too black now it's uh, it's gone back to that that dull black color and it looks it looks nicer now however uh, there's some there's some problems here so I can get this on video here you can see some discolorations here it looks kind of like a splotchy mess here and I think it may be residue from the the mark softer i thought after i had done the glass coat maybe if i put some mark softer it might soften the decals just a little bit more um, maybe there's some sort of reaction that's happened now what i did was i got it wet and i i rubbed it and it looked like it was just fine but after it dries it, you can see that splotch again so what i'm going to do is just kind of polish it off with uh, i think i might just do like a wet sand with 2000 grit paper. And maybe this might be a little bit too too rough. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Uh, let me think what I should do. Should I use 2000 grit sandpaper or actually I don't want to use any compound or anything like that. I don't think. Perhaps I could use 
this uh, 6,000 grit stuff here. Maybe I might use that instead of uh, 2,000 sandpaper. 2,000 sandpaper might kind of cut into it a little bit too much. Let me just get this wet. And hopefully it might just kind of take off that just only the discolorate the, the discoloration parts here. See I got some here too, it's kind of splotchy. And along this back panel here. See it, it seems to go away just fine when it's wet, but I'll wait till this dries and then see if I was successful. And what I'm using is the uh, uh, the Mr. Hobby uh, La Ploth, which is uh, uh, like a, like a like a polishing cloth. It's not really meant for for water, but I think maybe the, the water might help it out a little bit. I suppose. So yeah, yeah there's some crap here too. I need to take this off. And so I think this is just dust. I had this thing covered while I was on vacation because I didn't really work on it while I was on my winter vacation. And then um, I just put like a, some like a, like a sheet of uh, construction paper or something like that on top of the model to keep the dust off of it. But I think it's still got some dust on it. And I won't lie to you. You know I'm not going to hide my mistakes. I should have wiped this off before doing a top coat, but I didn't. So my sloppiness is uh, the reason for the reason why you know why I'm doing this right now. I should have been more careful, but yeah, whatever. What's done is done. So let me just continue to rub the surface just gently. And see if this takes off that discolored part. Okay, to give a recap, I did a coat of future gloss. Then I went over it with flat matte. And then that's when I had some problems. So, uh, as you saw me, I was using uh, some 6000 and doing uh, like wet sand. And that did not help. Still have the splotches. Next, I went ahead and just did that 2000 that I was considering doing to begin with, and the problem still did not go away. But every time I got it wet, it seemed to work. It seemed to be going away. And then when it dried, it just looked like crap again. Uh, so I went down to like a 1500, and still no avail. Now, what I did was I, I went back, uh, I used a gloss top coat, which is basically, this is future, that's basically what it is. And uh, I just did like a look, a test right here, like a stripe, and of, of course you could see it, it's glossy looking, but you also see that um, the splotches are gone here. So, as I figured that the, the, the wet, you know, from the water was, was making it go away, so I figured if I just use a gloss on it, Maybe it'll go away. So, what I want to do is, you see all this this crap here, what I want to do is just do a, a quick gloss over the problem areas. And then after it dries, then go back over it with a flat and see if my problem's solved. So, stay tuned. It worked. I'm very happy about this. So, with the splotches, I thought maybe I could have... Uh, my, the, the, the first thought I had was to maybe kind of cover it up with weathering. But it just bothered me. So I was just thinking, no sir, uh, I don't like it. So the I went over this with the, the gloss several times to make sure I, I got all of that stuff out of the way. And then I put on the flat coat and it has disappeared. Now this is still a little bit too shiny for what I want the end result to look like. But I think I will put on more flat coats after I start chalking it up. So I have 
This, this is a uh, Novel Car pastel sticks. These are artist watering chalks, or whatever you would call them. These are what you want. So uh, you can find some tutorials to tell you what kind of chalks to avoid. But I was lucky to find these chalks at my local um, uh, stationery store. So, and of course, I have a couple of brushes here. This is some. This is a Tamiya brush that I I just wrote chalk on it. So I use this brush exclusively for chalk. I also have this. This is a old crappy brush that I just kind of chopped off the the bristles. So it's just kind of just a stubby bristles. So, um, and also I have a white glove to use while I'm holding the model. So, you, if, uh, if you've been watching my videos for a while, um, you saw that I, I used this on my Galaga Starfire model. I also used it on the Yamato 2520 model. Um, also a little bit on that uh, TIE Interceptor model, the MPC TIE Interceptor model. And speaking of TIE Interceptors, you know, I, I still have that uh, Fine Molds TIE Interceptor to, to take care of. So, alright, this is enough to work with. This is just like a really dark gray. And I'm going to brush this on and then maybe work on like maybe like a, a lighter gray on top of that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pretend I'm Michael Jackson and uh, put on a glove here on one hand. There we go. It's a little bit tight, but it, it fits. I, I, I could have gotten a larger glove, but I'm okay with it. <clears throat> so I'll use this uh, glove here because I don't want to get any... Uh, fingerprints in the, on the chalk. <clears throat> so, I haven't been touching this very well, uh, very much, so don't believe I will get any uh, fingerprints when I put chalk on here. Should be okay. So, oh yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is like a dull coat in itself, really, so let me just... Uh, Kind of put this on in streaks, just kind of uneven streaks. There, can you see that? Pretty neat, huh? So yeah, just uh, I think the, the trick is to you know don't go over the the entire model. Kind of want to just uh, make it uneven looking. Make sure that the uh, the the darker color still sh uh, shows through. So what I'm going to do is just kind of streak it like down this way and then down this way. So I'll continue with this a bit and then uh, show a bit later. So I saw the Hobbit 3, um, the Battle of the Five Armies, and I, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I, I think those... And any, any of the movies are going to get uh, people getting upset, but I, I kind of like how it was kind of stretched out. I, I I know Peter Jackson wanted to have it just as two movies, and I think the studio wanted it to uh, to be stretched into three movies, but they they did a pretty good job, I think. Uh, there's some people complaining about the CGI, but I didn't think it was that bad looking. Um, some of the stuff that was CGI, I didn't I couldn't tell. I guess I don't have that 
much of a, a, a trained eye, I suppose. Um, but anyhow, I, I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was pretty cool. And I really appreciate how, um, you know, Peter Jackson and Fred Walsh, when they were writing the scripts, they brought more life to the dwarves that uh, even Tolkien was not able to do himself, really. I mean, he, he didn't really... He only focused on, on Bilbo, and you don't really get a sense of any of the dwarves, except for maybe Thorin, and um, the others are just, they have no personality, so I just know that, like, you know, Bomber's the fat one, and that's pretty much it, so it's kind of disappointing. Um, but they, he really made the, the dwarves into, like, these really likable, pretty cool people. So, I thought it was pretty great. So how does that look? Looks pretty cool, huh? Looks uh, kind of weathered, huh? So I've been using this paintbrush with the really stubby bristles. And I've just been dabbing it into the chalk and brushing it on. So the last thing I'm, I'm doing now is... Uh, now these, these things are called these cone shaped they, these are I think they're called spikes and when the and when the blackbird goes faster these will retract into the fuselage and I've been doing some research watching some videos on YouTube and such on the, the blackbird it's not that the engines push the airplane it's just they more like they uh, they pull and the faster the, the Blackbird goes, the more fuel efficient it becomes. It's kind of interesting. Now, I mentioned that my dad worked on the Blackbird. So I called him and I asked him, hey, you know, since you were into like uh, photography and such, is that what you worked on? And uh, he said that he worked on the electronics. And I asked him about these, you know, what are these little windows, and you know, are these where the cameras go? He said he wasn't familiar with that. Um, he just said that, uh, you know, quite quite possible that the way that the Blackbird functioned is not quite the way uh, I, you would expect it to, to be. That, that's all he said. He wasn't going to go into any more... Any more uh, uh, detail than that, but uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, what I want to do next is uh, do another shade of, of, of chalk for, for the weathering here. By the way, this little circular thing here, there's like a little window here, and I was one of the documentaries I watched said that this is um, an astral inertial tracker and it's basically it looks at the stars and that's how it can uh, uh, position itself and so you don't get lost this thing here is for refueling and uh, you'll, you'll see like a mid-air refueler with the, the from, from the, the refueling plane with the pump going into here so, yeah, I think I'm ready to start another color. So, I did this dark, dark gray. Next, I'll do this light gray here. So, just as I did with the other one, I will shave off a bunch into the little tray here. Put this back away. And I don't think I'm going to do another shade of gray. I think I'm just going to just do these two here. So, now, this is on the box. This is an artist's drawing of the Blackbird. However, um, I, I've seen an actual photograph, I think, that this drawing is based on. So, as you can see, it's, that's the weathering pattern that I'm uh, attempting to achieve here. 
and you'll see that there's different degrees of uh, the weathering pattern here. So that, that's what uh, I hope to accomplish here. Now, what I want to do is get some post-it notes. And kind of stick this along the line here. And put another one right here. Here. Now dip this into the, the powder here. reposition this along this panel line here. There. Repeat the process here. So you get, get kind of like a sharp angle there. Let's do another one here. No, I should reposition this one here. There. Okay, so let's take a look at how it looks. Is that, is that pretty cool? What do you think? Now, or I'll also do it from above here as well. And just kind of also drag this down like so. There. And uh, just kind of just pick out these uh, panels at random and um, no wait where's the sticky part this is the sticky part I got it upside down or backwards I should say there okay so okay voila Let's pre repeat the process here, and like so, there. Pretty great, huh? Now I also want to kind of go along the top here as well. This, this is where there's going to be a lot of streaks going along the top, I'm sure. And. Uh, Let's apply a post-it note here. And just kind of pull it across this way. And let's lift up. There we go. I think we should get a lot on the nose here. Still, I'm just amazed that this nose has not busted off by now, you know? That's one thing I've really been concerned about. So let me uh, pick up here and show you what, I, what I've been doing so you can see a better eye angle. So, pretty cool, huh? Of course, I'm not finished. What I want to do is kind of smooth it out a little bit, too. But uh, that, that's what's going on here. Yeah, kind of pull it across here. So I just uh, had just kind of had the idea that you know if I use more than one color of chalk, it will give it more more depth, more more realism, more believability. So, I went ahead and I told my dad actually, because I, I failed to uh, produce this for his uh, his birthday, I went ahead and just told him what uh, I've been up to, and he was he was pretty pleased. So, at least, you know, I did call him on his birthday, and I told him, hey, you know, I don't have it done, but at least that is what I've been trying to do here for you. So... He's pretty cool. So, all right. No, well, let me just continue working on this, and I'll show you later.